Today I'm going to be giving you an update on how my pond is progressing. Yes! Please subscribe! Okay, as you're aware, when I dug out this pond, I wanted to expand it, and the only way I could expand it was to raise the level. Now, this wall over here, I built now, um, to raise the level about a foot. Um, and it'll, it, it does it quite adequately. But over here, I've got a double wall and a triple first layer, all the way through, until this curved wall. Then I've got um, a single span of bricks over here, and a, another single span underneath, but here it's two bricks high. Um, come and have a look inside. Okay, in the original pond, this was probably around the original height, or maximum height of the water that it was before. Now, I've raised it up. These are the border stones, and I've raised it up, so the next height of the water is going to be about here. And so what I've done here, because this is all backfill, I've taken some cement and I've shored up this piece of um, earth so that it doesn't um, collapse in on itself. But then I've put this layer of bricks with some concrete fill in between to make a platform for where I'm going to build the water feature. Now, you'll see that... Let, let me just show you. Now, this area here that I'm uh, sitting over here, or squatting, was initially a very deep little sump. Now, I was concerned that when I put the liner into here, it would be very, very wrinkled and stuff like that. And it would make it very, very difficult to get a, a, a relatively nice surface on the pond. So, what I've done is, it was about one and a half feet, about one foot, and about another foot deep. Um, so, it's not a large volume of water. So, I put a whole lot of rubble inside here, and I filled it up with earth just to make it easier and a flatter for when the pond liner comes in here. Because during the old days when they did it with um, uh, bricks and plaster and stuff like that, they could make the most intricate designs. And all they had to do was smooth it off and it would be very, very nice. But with the modern pond liners, you know, you, you can't have too much of an intricate design below the ground. So this is what I've done over here. And I want to show you something else of what I've done as well. Now, initially with his design, he had some rocks stepping down here because his water feature was up here and the water would sort of cascade down these rocks. Now, this is the rocks that he had. The one was stuck up here like this and then there was another one below and the water used to sort of cascade down here and onto this rock and then his water level was over here. So, because of the same reason that I've sort of filled the sump, I've taken these out because um, to wrap plastic around or line around this, it's a real obstruction. So I'm going to be doing something quite different on here. And when I get to building the water feature, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. Okay, having shown you inside the pond, you can understand that there's a lot of sharp edges that I have to really be worried about because I've filled it around with rubble and it's bound to subside and the sharp edges are bound to go through. So I've tried to take the extra precaution. Now I've had an old mattress that I got rid of or I had to change and I've stripped the mattress of all its fabric and everything else and I'm going to try and use the mattress and the um, the plastic of the new mattress to do a pre-liner. I don't know if this is necessary, it might be a total overkill but it's complete waste that I had and so I'm going to be trying to lay that inside. So let me get to that now and I'll show you. Okay, as you can see behind me, all the brickwork here we have cemented it in, it's got really like sharp edges the sharp edges over here on these stones. I try to get concrete to fill them in, but all over there's these very sharp edges. Now, this is the plastic that came off the new mattress. Now I'm going to put that down first to try and keep the fabric that I'm putting down as watertight as I can because I want to keep it there for as long as I can because that'll give me my pond liner an extra laugh. Okay, I've laid the plastic liner down. Now I've taken the the covering of the mattress, as you can see, it's an old mattress, and I'm going to start covering the areas. Now, this is the thickest, most padded part, and then I'm going to put on the stairs here, because I think the stairs have the most sharp edges around this area here. Well, as you can see, I'm being very, very cautious, because now I've got the underlay to put down. I'm going to put the underlay down quickly, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I've laid down all the pond liner. It came in three separate strips. 
and it seems to be thick, pretty thick. Now at the bottom of the sump, when I was standing there, um, a stone pierced through the um, liner. So I went and got an old jacket of mine that I'm not using anymore and I put that down as well for extra precaution at the very bottom where there was the sump. So I've got just about quite a lot covered. Um, I put a double liner where I couldn't get um, my mattress underlay, so I've covered that. Now I've just got the, the pond liner to put in, and when I'm finished that, I'll come back to you. Okay, the pond liner is in, it's a, quite a large one, and uh, I've now got to fill it up with water, and as I fill it up, I'll be getting into the pond to push out all the air bubbles and to try and flatten out the liner as much as I can. So let me get on with that. Well, as you can see, I've finished the pond liner now. It's full of water. I've trimmed off the edges of where it should be. And uh, it's looking really nice. Now I have to put the pump in and I have to start making the water feature. And I've got to do all the edgings. But that's for another project. At the moment, this is done. Um, I have to go this weekend and get some more fittings, piping for the um, pump. But now I know exactly where it's going to go. So, I'll see you next week when I start the, the water feature. Bye-bye.